All right, welcome to The Explainer. Today, we are diving headfirst into a really fascinating and, I gotta say, pretty unconventional paper from 2009 by an author named J. Alfred. The title's a mouthful, Creation of Minimal Plasma Cell Systems by Self-Organization in Earth's Dark Biosphere. But what it's really doing is building a step-by-step -step scientific case for an idea that is, well, it's pretty out there. So get this. Does an invisible world absolutely teeming with life exist right here on Earth? I know, I know, it sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi novel. But Alfred's paper actually connects the dots between astrophysics, plasma physics, and even biology to argue that this isn't just possible but maybe even plausible. The idea is that right alongside our familiar world, there's a second, completely invisible biosphere. Let's dig in and see exactly how he builds this case. Okay, so here's the game plan. We're gonna follow the paper's logic piece by piece. We'll start with this idea of an invisible halo around Earth, then look at what it's supposedly made of. Then we'll get into the really wild stuff, how life could pop up there, what it might look like, and maybe the biggest question of all, how in the world could we even go about searching for it? All right, section one, the foundation, Earth's invisible halo. So where does a wild idea like this even begin? Well, interestingly, it's not in a biology lab. It actually starts with gravity. And this surprising discovery about the density of dark matter right here in our own neighborhood, something we've noticed because of the tiny, subtle gravitational pulls on our spacecraft. So, if you go way out into the vastness of the galaxy, the background density of dark matter is, well, it's practically nothing. I mean, look at that number. It's basically the definition of empty space. But then, you look at what's happening right around Earth. The math, which is based on these weird anomalies we see in spacecraft flybys, suggests the density here is way higher. We are talking a 10 trillion times greater. I mean, that is just a staggering difference. And that massive gap is pretty much the bedrock of this entire theory. So what you get is this dark Earth, as the paper calls it. It's this huge, invisible sphere that's gravitationally stuck to our planet. Now, its mass isn't a big deal, but its volume, it's gigantic. We're talking over 1,300 times larger than the rocky planet we live on. The argument here is that we're basically living inside this vast, invisible, almost ocean-like environment, a potential biosphere right over our heads. Okay, on to section two, the substance, a universe of dark plasma. So we've got this huge, invisible place, right? The next logical question is, what's it made of? Now, usually when you think of dark matter, you probably picture these inert, kind of ghost-like particles that don't do much. But Alfred's paper pulls from theories that suggest it's something way more dynamic. The idea is that dark matter might have its own set of rules, its own physics. It could be made of particles with positive and negative charges, just like ours. But they interact using a dark electromagnetic force mediated by, you guessed it, dark photons. So when you get down to it, it basically acts just like the plasma that makes up 99% of our universe. It's just built from a different toolkit of particles and forces that our instruments are completely blind to. And, you know, this right here is the whole key. A boring, inert cloud of dark matter, it's not going to do anything interesting. But a plasma, a plasma is a totally different ballgame. It's dynamic, it's energetic, it can have electrical currents, it can form complex structures, it can store energy. It's a medium that has the potential for real complexity and maybe, just maybe, life. Okay, section three, the spark. Life from self-organization. Now, I get it. The idea of life just emerging from plasma, it sounds pretty out there. But the paper points to some actual real-world experiments that show plasma can organize itself in ways that are, frankly, surprisingly lifelike. So the paper really leans on two key findings. First up, you've got these lab experiments where scientists watch simple plasma spontaneously form these stable little spheres. And these things looked and acted a lot like biological cells. I'm talking a boundary, a nucleus, and they could even replicate. Then you've got computer simulations that showed plasma particles could naturally self-organize into these stable helical structures, kind of like DNA. So what this suggests is that the basic building blocks for life might just be built into the very physics of plasma. So let's move on to section four, the creature, anatomy of a plasma being. This is where it gets really interesting. 
You take the dark plasma environment, you add in this principle of self-organization, and the paper starts to build a detailed theoretical model of what one of these dark life forms could actually look like. It's almost like a kind of theoretical embryology for a plasma creature. It starts with a nucleus wrapped in a membrane-like sheath. Then, an axis with opposite currents develops, and these currents pinch to create hot spots. At these hot spots, little vortexes form, which basically act like mouths, pulling in energy. And then, to top it all off, you get these double helical currents, think of it as plasma DNA, that wrap around the whole central axis. It's a complete, structured organism built entirely from the principles of plasma physics. Which brings us to section 5, the hunt, searching for dark life. Okay, this is the big hurdle, right? If our atmosphere is filled with these things, how would we ever know? They're made of dark matter, they're governed by dark forces, by their very nature, we shouldn't be able to see them. But the paper suggests a pretty clever way we might be able to spot them indirectly. Okay, so here's the trick. The creature itself is giving off what the paper calls dark radiation. That's light made from its own physics. And yeah, we can't detect that at all. But as this thing moves through our atmosphere, it's bumping into regular old air molecules. And those collisions cause our air to release normal radiation, microwaves, light, heat, a secondary glow that our instruments can see. So it's like you can't see the invisible boat, but you can see the wake it leaves in the water. And this leads to a really specific testable prediction. The theory says that as one of these plasma beings powers up, the radiation it kicks off in our atmosphere would actually rise in frequency. So it might start off as a faint microwave glow, then ramp up into the visible spectrum, something our cameras could see, and then as it powers down, it would fade back into a microwave afterglow. That's a very specific energy signature you could actually go out and look for. And that brings us to the final section, section six, the connection an explanation for UAPs. This is where that predicted signature leads to the paper's final and, let's be honest, most speculative leap, connecting this whole theory to the very real-world mystery of unidentified aerial phenomena, what we now call UAPs. So Alfred points to this declassified report from the UK's Ministry of Defense, a study called Project Condine. And get this, after four years of investigating UAP sightings, their official conclusion was that some of these things were unknown plasma objects. And they specifically noted the intelligent, lifelike behavior of these objects. I mean, completely separate from Alfred's theory, a government report was basically describing plasma-based life forms. And this quote from the report, this is really the moment where it all clicks together. The MOD scientists were so stumped that they wrote that the radiation might be other than EM radiation as we currently understand it. Think about that. In the context of Alfred's theory, what is that other radiation? Well, it would be the primary dark electromagnetic radiation coming from the creature itself, the very thing our instruments can't see. So when you step back and look at it, J. Alfred's paper lays out this incredible chain of logic. He starts with real astrophysical data, connects it to actual lab results in plasma physics, and ends up with a radical but internally consistent theory that offers a potential solution to a genuine enduring mystery. Now, is the hypothesis correct? Who knows? But whether it is or not, it's a powerful reminder, isn't it? It makes you wonder what else might be going on. What other layers of reality could be operating on principles we haven't even begun to imagine? What else might we be missing right in front of our eyes? Thanks for joining me for this deep dive on The Explain.